Good morning. Happy Wednesday. I apologize for my tardiness. I was wrapping up on a client call, but I am so excited to be talking today about how constipation, bloating, um, swelling, all of that is not normal and what we can focus on to help prevent those things from happening, prevent them from coming back and make sure that you are feeling good. So if you're watching this live, please comment team live. If you're watching this replay, please comment team replay. I like to know when you guys are tuning in so we can make sure that these are at good times. Maybe you're on your little coffee break. I got my mug right here. I got my water right there. I'm going to go have a snack after this. I got to get ready for a client training at noon today. We have so many things going on inside of NWE and I'm so excited about them. So let's dive into this topic. First of all, constipation, bloating, swelling are not normal. If that is what your baseline is, then we need to get to that root cause. Constipation, bloating, and swelling are not normal. It's not normal to feel super bloated after having a meal. It is not normal to go three or four days without having a bowel movement. We have to make sure these are all kind of like biomarkers or whatever you want to call them of like your GI tract running is normally, your digesting food is normally, and probably if you're feeling constipated or bloated, your energy is probably in the tank. You're probably having some brain fog. You're probably not feeling up to par or to where you feel like you need to be and you feel like you're always running on empty. If this sounds like you, give me a thumbs up in the comments or say like, yep, I know that feeling or let me know your thoughts on that. But reminder, not normal. So why do these things occur? It's really because of our typical American diets. Our diets in America tend to be higher in saturated fat, lower in fiber, lower in protein, which are going to cause more of those things. Saturated fat, it's one of the, it's the not great version of fat that we have in our diet. It's coming from animal products. This has been shown to raise cholesterol and triglyceride levels. Um, However, cholesterol, dietary cholesterol does not affect blood cholesterol. So it's more so from that saturated fat intake. So being aware and saying like, okay, this is what's going on. I'm feeling bloated. I'm feeling constipated. I have, maybe it's a lot of red meat in your diet. Maybe you do a lot of highly processed foods. Remember, all of our food has to be processed. We're never taking anything right from the farm. This is a great food. I have this right here, the chia seeds and flax seeds, but it's been processed. Everything has to be processed, but it's still like considered like a healthy food, a good for you food. So with some of that highly processing um, that comes with a lot of those food and those ready to eat items, we lose a lot of the nutrient value. We lose a lot of the fiber. We lose a lot of the protein. We lose a lot of those vitamins and minerals as things get broken down and prepared for us to eat or to have in that meal. So when you grab, you know, you, I have wheat bread, you know, I have wheat bread or whatever it is, probably not whole wheat. Um, but during that processing from taking that grain of wheat and turning it into bread, your the processing has to change it and make it into something else. And with that, we lose a lot of the fiber. Fiber is going to be that big key to helping with preventing constipation and bloating. So there are two different types. And when we start to eat more whole foods or whole grains or more fruits and vegetables, we're going to get more of that fiber in, which is going to prevent that bloating, that swelling, that constipation. So fiber, we have soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. Think of it almost like a little branch here or like an umbrella. And then there's the two little pieces underneath it. With the soluble fiber, soluble fiber is like a sponge for our digestive system. This means it helps us soak up excess triglycerides and cholesterol in the body. If you put, here's an example, chia seeds into water. Chia seeds are a soluble fiber. When you put them into water, they start to expand. They start to get bigger. They create more of like a mucusy kind of consistency. Think of a quinoa. As you cook it in water, it starts to expand. It starts to soak that stuff in. This is going to help with regulating hunger signs and keeping you feeling fuller for longer, as well as regulating blood sugar levels. So this is something that we want to keep in mind and keep on top of. Soluble fiber is a good thing. We're going to get it from whole grains. We're going to get it from avocados. We're going to get it from apples. We're going to get it from some of those like seeds and nuts too, like the chia seeds or like quinoa. So that's going to be helpful as far as with lowering cholesterol, but we have to help to make sure that we're getting this out of our body to prevent the constipation and the bloating. And that's where we really Really need to pay attention to our fruit and vegetable intake. These fruits and vegetables, especially those rougher fruits and vegetables that are very fibrous, think like green beans, think asparagus, think broccoli, think cauliflower, any of those leafy 
leafy greens. They're all high in insoluble fiber, which acts more like a sweep for our digestive system. When we have a sweep for our digestive system, we stay regular. If foods are taking too long to pass through the digestive tract, we're going to be feeling that bloating. So we have to stay hydrated, which is another piece of it I'll talk about in a second, but we have to stay on top of that color with meals. So if you can go into a meal and say, all right, half of my plate has color on it. Half of my plate is you know, a salad or half of my plate is green beans. It's gonna be a broccoli or whatever it is. I'm gonna put all of my asparagus on this side of my plate, whatever. That's really gonna help with keeping you regular and preventing that bloating. That other piece of the bloating, and I just said it one second ago, is the hydration piece. Anytime you increase your fiber intake, which is something that we're talking about right now, because it's going to help with the constipation and the bloating, we also have to increase fiber. With our water, excuse me, without water, we will become plugged. That gel-like consistency that that soluble fiber makes is going to sit in our stomach and our GI tract, and without extra water, we're not going to keep things moving. So we need the water, we need the insoluble fiber to help prevent the constipation. And as we keep increasing our fiber intake, the goal is 25 grams a day of fiber. The average American eats 13 grams a day of fiber. It's gonna help as far as the keeping you regular and preventing that bloating. So leading with things like those leafy greens, those crunchy vegetables, having soluble fiber on your plate is gonna help with keeping you fuller for longer, preventing constipation, lowering cholesterol levels, lowering triglyceride levels, and keeping you feeling really good too. Foods that are going to cause some of that bloating as well are going to be higher sodium foods, so trying to really limit those highly processed things, as well as um, things are going to be higher in fat, or things that you might even have like an allergy to. We don't want to have those foods if we have an allergic reaction. Go to an allergist and get tested for them. But we need to make sure that we're eating enough water and that we are not having foods that are going to cause more of that bloating feeling. So highly processed foods that are very high in sodium are going to leave you with that like blah feeling because your body holds on to more water when we have more sodium. Sodium. So staying hydrated, limiting those processed foods or those highly processed foods is going to be really helpful. So like I said, I have this here. You know, we want to look at that nutrition facts panel and I know that it's backwards for you, but you want to look at that sodium right there. This has zero grams of sodium in it, which is awesome. The average American diet has over three to 4,000 milligrams of sodium in it. The recommendation for sodium intake is 2,300 milligrams a day. So if we can be more mindful and looking back at the packages of things, if you have a lot of bloating and saying, all right, I'm gonna choose things that only have 10% or less of my daily value of sodium, it's going to be easier to help to control that overall sodium intake and help preventing that bloating too. So just to recap here for us, Staying hydrated is going to be a huge piece to help with constipation and bloating. We also need to make sure that we're getting the different types of fiber and the soluble fiber through whole grains, bananas, avocados, apples, things like that, um, especially or as well as insoluble fiber, which is going to be like um, some seeds and nuts will also have insoluble fiber, but those rougher fibrous fruits and vegetables are going to help with keeping things regular. A cup of raspberries has eight grams of insoluble fiber in it. You're going to feel so good when having those. You're going to have less of that bloating feeling. We also need to pay attention to sodium intake because that's also going to hold on to more water in our body, which is also going to cause some of that bloating and swelling too. So fiber, half of a plate of color, choosing more whole grains, staying on top of sodium, drinking more water is all going to combat all of that. So that way you feel better. Does this make sense? Give me a thumbs up down in the comments or get this video a thumbs up if this makes sense. Is there something missing in your diet if you crave sodium um, slash love salty foods? Great question, Lisa. You're probably not getting enough water in. Your body is able to figure out and see, okay, if I crave more water, if I crave more sodium things, you're going to be drinking more water. We go to a restaurant here that gives you popcorn. They give you popcorn because it's very salty, so you order more drinks. So if you're craving more of those sodium-rich foods, we have to stay on top of your water intake to help with balancing that out. And maybe it's also putting some of those higher sodium sodium things in with those regular meals as well. So it's not just centered around that one thing where we then can overeat on it too. So staying hydrated, is going to be a huge piece with the sodium intake and with the craving of the higher salty foods. So sounds like you guys like this. Let me know if you have any other questions, please leave them down in the comments below. I will definitely go back and answer all of them. Yesterday, we dropped and unleashed our next small group coaching program that is kicking off July 5th get unstuck. So this program is dedicated and focused on helping you overcome that mindset, the metabolism, 
the plateaus that can happen while we are on our journey or changing our nutrition. We want to make sure that you don't get stuck on that and we're going to help kind of going over what to do and why that happens, why we get stuck and the science behind all of that. So if you're interested in it, it is on early bird, early bird sale right now. Price is going to go up in two weeks to be $250 is that final price. This week and next week it is only $200. So if you're interested in this, send me a message or comment um, program down below and I will send you the link. We can do split up payments as well. But Get Unstuck is going to be going over and understanding mastering your mindset around nutrition and your changes in weight loss and your overall health. We're going to talk about metabolism. We're going to talk about plateaus. We're going to talk about nutrition, things to consider to help keeping you going forward. So if you have any questions on that, please let us know. Get Unstuck. It's going to be awesome. I already had a couple of clients be like, holy crap, this is, I love this theme of this program. I'm so excited to be inside of it. So if you're interested, let me know. I will send you over the link. $200 gets you inside. Um, it's going to be awesome. So have a wonderful rest of your day, everybody. I will talk to you soon. See ya.